Welcome back to the Offbit. Today we've got a bit of a tech kind of repair video. This is the Dell Dimension 5100. Now I don't know if this is a common fault with the Dell Dimension 5100, but my bet it is. But this machine struggles to turn on. So today we're going to investigate what's going on and we're going to fix it. So stick around. Welcome back. Now, does your Delta Dimension 5100 do this? Huh, doesn't want to turn on. What's going on? Why aren't you turning on? What is going on here? Well, the problem is more simple than you think. We basically have a broken button. Now, being a Dell, they always make it fun. So, Let's go and look at what we need to do to make this to work. So this is the circuit board that the power button sits on. You can see the power button right in the middle here. So we need to pull this out of the machine and effectively we either change the circuit board or change that switch. Now this circuit board is located at the front of the case, just right here, and it's only held in by one screw, which when it comes in focus, you can see. Simply remove the screw and detach the I.O. cable that's connected to the circuit board. Once this is done, you're good to repair or replace. Now we've got the whole board out of the case, we just need to disassemble the plastic and metal bits so we've got the naked circuit board. There's a little dust cover on the USB you will have to move out of the road just so the metal base can come out. From here you can change the circuit board, but we're going to change the switch. So similar switches can be purchased from eBay or other electronic shops. We bought ours from JCar for about one Australian dollar. Now ours wasn't a perfect match, so we just had to trim a bit off, which I don't know if you should do this. However, we did it anyway, and it didn't seem to affect the switch. So the length of the switch now is the same length as the OEM Dell switch. Now we've done the easy part. The hard part is we've got to actually get the old switch out. Now, solder removal is a bit of a trick with through hole components when there's a massive ground plane so you can see all that green area the lighter green that is all copper and that's going to take all the heat so you need to get this really hot which can be a problem with other components because you can actually damage components but there's not a lot of things to damage here that we care about i mean if we melt the switch that's broken doesn't matter anyway now I didn't want to bore you with a long video of me struggling to pull this component tree out, so we sped it up. After wrestling this with a bit, we changed tactics, so we've just stuck some pliers. I've basically gripped together like vice grips with a zip tie on the back and we've just extracted the old component out. So what you got to do now is basically remove the old solder out of the hole so we can put the new switch in. So that's done with the solder sucker and it's just as difficult. You do have to get a lot of heat still on this but it's doable. If you've got the time and you've got the energy it's worth doing because you can save yourself a lot of dollars. Otherwise, the easier route is just to buy a replacement board, and I probably recommend that because this is actually a tricky thing to do. Now, once we've got the solder removed, the easier part of the job is actually put this switch in, just slip it into the old footprint, and it should just go straight in because it's pretty much the same. Sorry about how the camera didn't catch us putting it in, but anyway. At this point, we just got to solder the new switch in, and we're right to go. Everything's looking pretty good here. We just go do a little bit of a cleanup. That's an optional thing. So if you use some electronic circuit board cleaner of sorts, just spray it on and use something like a toothbrush or a rake and that will take the excess burnt flux off the board. 
if you do leave this on here, it's not going to do anything bad unless um, solar drips in there that might be shorting out stuff. But other than that, it's quite fine. It's not conductive. It just looks ugly. Now, I had a couple of solar drips I had to remove off. I just basically used them with my pliers. They weren't really holding on by much. You can see on that big hole. But anyway, let's get this thing back together and see how she goes. Simply, we just reassemble everything the same way we disassemble it, just in reverse order. Once you bolt to the metal backplate and the plastic lead decators on, we're ready now to plug this back into the main machine. So connect the I.O. lead up to the board, slide it into place, and screw it down tight. And we should be right to boot it up. Now, if everything's worked right, this should work. Just like that. Now, the Dell Dimension 5100 is a very old system. I think you're looking at 2004, somewhere along those lines for the release. Now, most of these systems are either Pentium 4 or Pentium D. Now, this fix probably will work on other Dells that use the same circuit board. So, I imagine there's other cases out there that apply. Now, before we wrap it up, just want to tell you a little story about this Dell machine, the Dimension 5100. I picked this up secondhand faulty. Of course, the problem was it didn't turn on. However, we bought it for the case and we already knew how much work needed to be done to get a normal motherboard inside it. So I bought this computer to do a special project. It was a faulty computer at the time. What also makes this PC cheap to buy is repurposing these things is not easy. For starters, the PCI Express slots on the BTX motherboard that came with it are on the wrong side. So we got around it by mounting the motherboard in the wrong way. It's a micro ATX, it's all we could fit in there. We've got a ribbon cable for the video card and we're just running USB off the slots on the back. So why would we do this? Well, we do a special LAN every year and we have a certain build date. Now, everything in the computer basically needs to comply with that date, except for a couple of exceptions, things like power supplies and stuff like that. And there's nothing better than putting a cloud of mystery by putting all your gear in a case that they don't expect. Something we call smoke and mirrors. Now before I go, I'll just say that this problem affected my new motherboard as well as the old motherboard. It was the switch that was faulty. And the way I found out was when I put my new gear in, it didn't turn on. So I had to chase the fault. So if you have a Dell Dimension 5100 and it doesn't turn on, or it's sort of sometimes it works and some days it doesn't, you'll need to change that board or change that switch. That's all we have today for the off bit. Thank you for once again watching us do our thing. We like to put these videos up so we can help you. Now, if this video was helpful today for you guys, or if you enjoy watching this content, please hit that like button. And if you're not part of the community yet, and you want to keep on seeing these videos, hit that subscribe. We keep releasing new videos pretty much every week. So come in, join the crew. And always please feel welcome to leave a comment. I do read them and I do respond. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you guys next time on The Offbit.